Hi, hi. Stuart Elliott, president of the Hornets Green uh, Byron Air Rifle Club here in Brisbane. Uh, just a quick chat about a rifle set up just so that you get a little bit of an idea of what Benchrest rifle shooting is all about. And just before we start here, we should be clear, we have a safety flag in this gun, so there's no bolt and no ammunition here, just because we're filming from the front. So, I think we discussed before that the, it's called bench rest. So the rifle sits in a rest at the front, which is actually a leather bag with sand in it. And at the back, there's a leather bag with sand in it. Now, it looks really fancy, this is an Italian leather bag, really nice and smooth and the rifle stock shape is made so that it slides very easily in this rest. So the idea of bench rest shooting is that the rifle is held in the rests and you can aim it either by squeezing the rear bag or in this case have a joystick bench rest system which I can move across the target and aim wherever I like. So the idea is you don't really hold the rifle. These are 22 rim fire, there isn't any recoil so you don't actually need to even touch it without shoulder here, the recoil would only be about that much, you push it back again and it would reload. So generally the technique is to sit very still, release the trigger very gently and purposely and the two eyes open will be looking at the wind flags and observing the different wind patterns that move across the range. Check where your crosshairs are aimed to and quickly check and when the wind is in a certain angle and you know how much you need to aim off you will move your crosshairs across, aim off, and then release the trigger and the shot will go. Some people who don't quite get that, I, I use the analogy of like, you see people kicking a soccer ball from a long way out to try to get it in the corner of the net over the goalie, and you see the ball curve on in there like that and falls down in there. It's a sort of a similar thing, but of course the bullet travels so fast you can't see it, so it's not quite the same as a soccer ball. But anyway, that's generally, uh, Generally, the analogy of how it works. So let's come and take a look at some of the rifles. So we can see on this rifle rack here, there's lots of different colours and unusual things, and on the end of the barrels, a whole lot of things that many shooters wouldn't be used to seeing at all. But these are actually things on the end of the barrel that we use to tune the ammunition, because 22 rimfire ammunition, you cannot reload it. You have to buy commercial grade stuff and different ammunition likes different rifle barrels and different stuff. It's a little bit like grandma makes a cake in the oven and she takes it the same recipe to a different oven that might not work. So that's how these work. So here's a fairly uh, typical rifle that we use today. It's my own rifle as a matter of fact. So we're using generally stainless steel barrels. A barrel tuner with a number of sections we'll put in it with a carbon fiber sleeve on it. So once we've got this barrel set to a tune, we don't usually need to change it. It'll shoot usually all good ammunition. Usually got a high power magnification scope on there. This one is a March 10 power to 60. We usually run it on 60 power at the moment. So we're only shooting at 50 meters, but we like to see very, very fine detail of exactly where we need to aim each shot. And these are just a single shot bolt action rifle. This particular stock is painted red, but it's actually made with carbon fiber and a special wood composite stock, so it's reasonably lightweight, fits into the yeah. rifle weight. So that's some of the rifles. You can see that there are a variety of different stuff. Some people like some nice, nice paint shot, and other people like to go with traditional timber and stuff like that. So there's quite a variety. If we move over here to some of the bench rests, um, a bench rest, is a, a device to sit the front end of the rifle as have a sandbag and the rear of the rifle is supported in another sandbag and that's where the term bench rest comes from. So <clears throat> the idea is not to eliminate the skill of holding the rifle but to significantly reduce that. It's different to other types of shooting discipline. But in reducing that, so you don't hold the rifle, you can steer and aim it by moving the joystick. The idea is it focuses the skill very very greatly onto the wind route. So first of all you need to get an accurate rifle, you need to develop accurate ammunition that matches that rifle so that you can deliver good shots in good conditions and then in a match as we've seen this afternoon we have some pretty significant wind and each target has a 20 minute timing period to get 25 record shots away and you've got to figure out whether you have the patience to wait or whether you need to know exactly where to aim off the land to shot in. As I described before, one of the really important things is reading the wind. So to read the wind, you need information. And 
The rules of this allow everyone, you can develop your own wind flag or wind indicator or all sorts of things and everybody brings along some pretty unusual stuff. Let's come and have a look at some. So some of this here is already packed up, owned by different competitors here already. So you can see that they uh, have a, a fairly special sort of a, a wind vane, ball bearing centres, propellers on ball bearings, special sail cloth material that as the wind increases will move up and down, different colours on the on the propellers give the angle, different things like that and they're all height adjustable so that when they set them on the range they will give the indication they need. Uh, there are other things as well which are just a flat paddle which don't give much wind direction angle but they give a fair bit of a, a, a a feeling of the stability of the wind and the force of the wind. Whether it's bouncing, that's not very stable wind, but if it is leaning over pretty well, you can tell your, your bullets are gonna get drifted a lot more. So yes, a lot of wind flags. That's why you see a lot of wind flags. It seems confusing, but without information, you can't actually make good judgments. So that's how that works.